Your resume says you are a data analyst, but it doesn't look like one. That's why you are not getting even a single interview call. If you have applied for more than 50 jobs and still haven't heard back, chances are the problem isn't your skills, it's your resume. Most aspiring data analysts, they don't realize that this resume is not only the list of their experiences, it's their personal brand. So in today's video, I have divided it into three parts. The very first thing we are going to talk about why your resume might not be getting noticed. Number two, we are going to analyze two resumes, the real life resumes that the candidates they submitted to me. What are the things that they needed to improve if they wanted to get an interview call? And third and final, I'm going to walk you through a resume template that you should follow. And also we are going to talk about in that template, how exactly you should write about your project study. Hey everyone, I'm Sahil Gogna and I'm a data engineer at one of the top banks in Canada. And if you're new to this channel, we talk a lot about IT industry in Canada, specifically the data rules. And in today's video, we are going to talk everything about resume making. So guys, let's first talk about why your resume might not be getting noticed. The recruiters, they have hundreds of applications to review. And if every single candidate is applying on them, and if they have more than 500 applicants on one single job listing, they will probably have 15 to 20 seconds in order to make a decision whether they are going to review the resume in detail or not. If you're not looking like a data analyst or a professional who can solve their data problems, then you're not going to get a chance for the interview. You need to understand that why the interviewers are going through your resume because they are looking for a data professional who can help them to solve the problems that they are facing using the skill set that candidate has. So if you are looking like just a random professional or a student or a software developer, you're not going to get a job. They want someone with experience in data domain, specifically in data analytics and all the tools and technologies. And not only just tools and technologies, they need someone who has solved the problems. Maybe not the real world problems because you might be a fresher, right? So you're just getting out of college or, or a university, but you don't have the real world experience. But the recruiters, they would still love to see any of the good projects or any of the thing which can win their confidence that this candidate is the right fit to solve the problem. So if your resume is just looking like a general purpose resume, and I know there are thousands of videos on YouTube which will teach you how do you create a resume. But there's one thing that I felt that which is specifically missing. So that's why we'll break down everything and transform your resume into something that actually catches the eye of recruiter. So right now I'm going to share my screen and there I'm going to present two resumes that the candidates they submitted to me and we are going to talk about what are things that they could have improved if they wanted to get an interview call. So the very first resume as you can see about this resume is the template. It's, it's very simple, it's plain, there's no fancy uh, columns, there's no fancy photographs or any of the graphics. So generally it's recommended that you use a template which is very easy to read. Good thing that the candidate they have put their all the details at the top. But when it comes to the very first section, the profile summary, you would see that if they want to become a data analyst, it looks like a very general profile summary. It looks like that they copy and pasted it straight away from Google, right? Or maybe they used any other chat GPT or any other AI systems where they didn't talk about what are the problems that they have solved. Right? Imagine that if I copy paste this particular uh, section and take it to someone else's resume, right? So instead of this candidate's resume, if I paste it in your resume, it's going to work for you as well, right? So it's not something personalized that belongs to a candidate, right? And also about the data problem, it's just this one line that actually reflect that this candidate might have done something related to data. So this particular section, the profile summary, it needs to be uh, very personalized where you try to highlight what are the key skills that you have and what are the impact that you have created on your job as well. So this is something that should catch the attention of the recruiter, right? Number two thing is the work experience. If you see the work experience of this candidate, they have written so many of work experiences, but none of them, not even single one of them reflects their skill set as a data analyst candidate. Right? It's okay if you have done odd jobs or if you have done any of the other jobs, but if they're not directly contributing to the role of a data analyst, then it's not worth mentioning them. It just throws away the recruiter and they, they will assume that this candidate has no experience in data analytics, right? So for example, this loss prevention operator or I mean, whatever the things that they have done. So if you're specifically mentioning that you are applying for a role of a data analyst, the second thing on this resume, it should have been something that 
helps you to leverage your technical skills, right? It could be your work experience in the internship role if you have. If you don't have, then you'll have to write your projects. We're going to talk about what's a correct order, but right now I'm trying to review this particular resume with you guys and see if you are able to understand what's the bad things in this resume definitely you're not going to commit the same mistakes in your resume so work experiences now you guys understand because see being in being a sandwich artist is nothing bad right you might need to do some part-time jobs but if it's not directly helping you to showcase your skills as a data analyst, it's not worth, worth mentioning it, right? Then the project section is missing. So if this person, he has no experience as a data analyst and they wants to showcase their skill set, they should be mentioning the project section. So that part is, that's a very crucial part and it should have been in the very first page. So it should not be missing. Then it comes about the education. So even the edu education has nothing to do with being a data analyst, right? So in that case, see, you don't require a specific degree or education. If you want to become a data analyst, you just need good amount of skills. And if you have some background, which is not related to data analytics, it's totally fine to mention it, but don't mention in that much of detail. Doing anything else, like summarizing the financial statements from information, it's not directly adding value to your candidacy being a data analyst. It should be just that you mentioned that you have a bachelor's degree and you have some sort of other additional courses as well. That's totally fine to mention, but don't go into too much of details because it's taking up a lot of space, right? And talking about the space, this resume is spanning over two to three pages, right? Even this blank page, it's, I mean, they should not have this blank page as well. It reflects that this candidate was careless in, you know, formatting their resume. So. Ideal case scenario, if you are a candidate with less than 10 years of experience, you should have just one page of your resume. That's it. And this candidate, he has, he's, he's a fresher and he is still using two pages uh, to show the skill set. And in fact, in those two pages, it's still not clear that why are they right fit for that particular role for which the company is hiring. Then you talk about the skills. They have not mentioned nothing about data analytics, no technical skills, no no problem solving skills, nothing. And the languages section, I don't think so it's important because if you, let's say if you're applying in Canada, then you should definitely have English as your main language. And if you're applying in India, then definitely again, in India as well, all the IT companies, they prefer that you should be very skilled with your English skills, with your communication skills. So uh, by default, it's pretty much uh, explicit that you should know English. In case the, uh, the job description specifically mentioned that they require someone who has French experience or maybe German or, or whatever the company that you're applying for, then yes, definitely it's worth mentioning. But even in that case, I think you should be mentioning that here in your professional summary because just creating an extra section for language is going to take so much of space because right now we have just talked that you need one page resume, right? So if you keep on putting extra sections for every single thing, then it's going to be very difficult for you. Now let's move to the second resume, which is a bit better than the previous one that we have just reviewed, but it's still not anywhere near to, you know, get an interview call. That again, the template is really good, I would say, because it's, sim it's simple, it's plain, it will be passed by ATS, and even for the humans, it's very easy to read, right? But just imagine that you are presented with this resume and the very first thing that you notice on this resume is the Walmart sales associate work experience. Now you need to ask a question to yourself. Is this experience really adding any sort of value or it's helping this candidate to showcase their skills as a data analyst? No, right? So you need to understand that the recruiters, they're going to give you a chance to interview only if you're able to express yourself as a data analyst and you can show yourself that you are the right person to solve the data problems, right? So being a sales associate at Walmart, it might help you to improve your communication skills, but you have to understand that just the communication skills are not good enough to get your job as a data analyst. Then when it comes to project, right? On the very first glance, it might seem that, okay, this candidate has done really some has done something good with their projects and but when you analyze them deeply right so this this particular candidate he has done something related to mantra uh, they were trying to unveil the e-commerce trend which is totally fine but imagine that you are doing something for your hobby project you are downloading data set from Kaggle or any other public resources and then you're trying to sell yourself as someone who has increased the sales by 15 percent just imagine guys if you were already increasing the sales of Mantra by 15%, why would you be still applying for jobs? Why didn't Mantra hire you, right? So it doesn't make any sense that from public data, you are trying to increase the revenue. And 
as an experienced professional, I'm clearly able to see that this candidate has just mentioned these quantitative figures in order to pass the ATS or just to grab attention, right? It's advisable to mention the quantitative figures, but they should be making any sense. You just cannot tell that I increase the sales by 15% when you're doing a hobby project. Right? So it doesn't make any sense. Even for the other projects, they are not personalized, they are not end-to-end -end projects, they are not directed towards solving a real-world problem. And it simply seems that the candidate has put these experiences just for the sake of creating a resume. Now, if you are curious in knowing what exactly are the end-to-end -end projects, you'll have to subscribe to the channel because in coming few weeks, I'm going to upload an end-to-end -end project video, which will be one of the projects that you can directly, you know, follow and put in your resume. It is going to be very, very creative, very, very great project because it's not going to something that you'll simply download the data set from Kaggle and you'll be creating visualization. It is going to be a complete process. So if you want to get notification for that video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now let's head back to the other part. For the education, I think that's good. Now the important thing, the skills and interest section. Right, guys, look, if you're applying for a data analyst job, yes, Python is required, right? So when you explicitly say that I know Python as a data analyst, the interviewers, they are going to assume that you know these libraries, because what's the point of knowing Python if you can't even analyze data using Python, right? And if you are able to analyze data, then you will definitely require to know these libraries. So you don't need to mention each and every single library that you have ever worked upon, right? Then same is with the SQL. You don't mention. Imagine someone who has 10 years of experience and if they start writing everything that they know about SQL is just going to be one or two pages about the SQL concepts. So it doesn't make any sense to write all of the concepts that you know in a particular tool or technology, right? Even with the data engineering, this person has written AP and web scraping, which are very generalized skills to have and it has nothing to do with data engineering. So you'll have to make sure that you are writing the right technical tools and I'm going to show you in the resume template which are the exact skills or how do you structure your resume when it comes about the technical skills. Even with these kinds of skills like they are just written for the sake of uh, the keyword matching. It doesn't make any much sense because there's a better way to write these kinds of skills. Then comes the soft part right and it's again very debatable topic because most of the times you have effective communication skills you are a problem solver but imagine telling this to a recruiter. Why would they believe that you are a problem solver, right? So there's a better section to prove yourself as a problem solver and that's not the skill section. It's your experience and the project section. Imagine I'm telling you guys that I'm a problem solver or let's say I'm telling you guys that I'm a team leader. It doesn't make any impact on you as a listener. But if I tell you that in my capstone project, I led a team of four people where I was the one who came up with the problem and I did X, Y, Z thing, right? So the moment I tell you this thing, I automatically showed my leadership skills. I showed that I'm someone who is also good at taking initiatives, right? So according to me, these soft skills, you should be showing either in your project section or in your experience section, right? Awesome guys. So now I'm going to talk about how exactly a good template should look like. So this is a template and again, if you want the template to follow, I'm going to leave the link in the description so that you guys can just refer to this template and create one for yourself as well, right? So the very first thing that you noticed, it's uh, the general details of the candidates. Then the first section is the profile summary. And irrespective if you're applying for an internship or a full-time role, the first section could be profile summary. Again, it's a very debatable topic that some people, they prefer writing profile summary, some say that, it's just a waste of time. You'll have to experiment it for yourself, guys. There's nothing like perfect resume. A perfect resume is the one that works for you. So you'll have to see what type of resume, what type of template will help you to get an interview call, right? So try to experiment the profile summary, try to highlight the number of years of experiences that you have, what are the tools that you have worked upon, uh, what's your strength. If you're someone who's very good with visualization, uh, try to write that. One thing that I would like to add in this particular section, it would be my skill set as a data professional and how did, what kind of numbers I have achieved, right? So you can mention that here in the profile summary as well. Then comes the skill section. This is a way that you segregate your skill section. What are the programming languages you know? What are the tools and uh, other visualization tools, right? What are the databases? What are the cloud platforms? So this is how you mention. And even if you have some sort of certifications, feel free to create another section for certification and mention them here. Then comes the professional experience. And again, this is not something which is just randomly written. 
it follows the star and or the car mythology where you try to explain what was the situation what kind of task did you do what were the actions taken and what were the results achieved for example this is again an example of showing results wherever you're showing figures they show that you have achieved something in the project right so you are also mentioning the type of technologies that you have worked upon so instead of writing pandas in the skill set this candidate has written it over here. and it's a good good way to reflect your technical skills right same thing is with the projects so you write the projects in the similar way where you are trying to show an impact using star or car methodology right so you can search by uh, search on the internet about star methodology right so it stands for uh, situation task action and result and similar way there's a car c a r car methodology that you can search for uh, on internet and try to write your pro projects and your experiences using those then it's again educations uh, then the certification, certifications and awards. If you have done some extra certification or award, feel free to write them here as well in the separate section. Or if you have just one, you can also try to put it in the skill section, right? And then the voluntary experience as well. If you haven't done anything, for example, if you don't have any of the professional experiences to show, you can always write your voluntary experience as well. One another resume template that I really want to mention because even in this resume template, you, you might have seen that it's going over one page if you really want to have a good template this is a template that you can try writing your resume on so i'm going to leave the link for this resume template as well in the video description below so guys that was the whole video see if you're creating an impactful resume it just based upon some sort of principles the common sense principle right so you don't need to do fancy things while creating a resume you just need to follow the simple things over and over again so this was the structure of the resume that you should follow. These are the things that you should be avoiding. And at the end, you should be looking like a candidate who can solve the data problems for the team. I hope you really liked the video. Make sure to subscribe the channel because in the coming few weeks, I'm going to upload a lot of videos about other data careers as well. And also some of the end-to-end -end projects that you guys can simply follow and put it on your resume. Make sure to like the video and do comment down that what were the misconceptions that you had about resume creation. And what are the, some other videos that you want me to create? I'll see you again next week in a new video. Thanks a lot for watching.